Welcome inside the Air Canada Centre. Good morning, Mark Osborne. Just showing up at the rink. Just walk on in. That's what we do here. Uh, hashtag TML Talk. It's our game day show live from the Air Canada Centre as the Leafs and Ottawa Senators will face off tonight. Dan Dunleavy, Propashi, Mark Osborne, and Tessa Bonham, who now feels a lot warmer. She has a friend to sit with. She was alone in the back row. But <laughs> well, that didn't last for long. Speaking of lasting a little longer than he likes, it's uh, been eight games. We're going to jump right into things here a little bit. Oh. Going to get right into it. Eight games since Tyler Bozak has scored a goal as a member of the first line for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Not piling on, but that's the facts. The good news is, there's always a, a silver lining I've learned to bring up here, is that against the Ottawa Senators, he has scored more goals and had more assists than any other team he's played against in the NHL. Seven goals, seven assists. The last game that Tyler Bozak scored in was February 16th. Looking at my notes here, I have to cheat against the Ottawa Senators. So, welcome to town, Ottawa. And uh, Tyler Bozak says hello because he's been waiting for this game. Uh, listen, that's going to be the talk of the town today, Mark. We're going to jump right into it. Time for uh, Mr. Bozak, Mr. Van Riemsdyk, and Mr. Kessel. I think not just to get one goal in a hockey game, but to show that they're going to control where this game goes tonight. Yeah, you know what? I mean, it's the ebbs and the flows of the season. And, Dan, I mean, you've got all the stats there. You're cheating and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> well, you show up oh, yeah, early. I mean, you we, get your work we, done. You know, part of my keys to the game the other night when, uh, you know, the Leafs were playing the New Jersey Devils was that top line is, if the top line scores, chances are the Leafs are going to win. Um, they've been getting consistent production, certainly out of the cadre line. And, uh, you know, Kessel, Bozak, uh, Van Riemsdyk, I mean, they play over 20 minutes a night. Uh, they get power play time, and it, it has to be a given night in and night out that have to contribute in some ways. And they've been quiet lately. I mean, you go back to the game against Montreal here last week. I mean, it wasn't one of their better efforts. On the island, even though the Leafs did win and Van Riemsdyk did score, um, again, they weren't that dominating or noticeable per se. Same thing the other night. They got a key goal, the fourth goal. I mean, James Reimer makes that huge save, and then they can't come down on a two-on-one. That's the capability that that top line does have, and skilled players, you know, should be bearing their chances, certainly on odd man rushes. So to say that, we're now talking about Tyler Bozak with seven games, no goals. Um, I, I think over the course of his three years here that we've always watched him play is we'd like to see him shoot the puck more. I mean, he's always... Uh, you know, more concerned about getting into Kessel or Lupel or Van Riemsdyk, and there's nothing wrong with that. And even as you watch Tyler in the offensive zone, and, you know, I know Tessa could, you know, comment on this as well, he may not necessarily be a very uh, creative player when it comes to making plays and drawing guys to himself and dishing it off, finding late men or something like that, but he does have good chemistry with those guys, and he makes smart passes. Uh, obviously, you see his minutes. I mean, his face-offs and all that kind of stuff. So, um, the team is, continues to win, and and it's old. It's that old adage in some respects. Uh, imagine if they did start to score again, what that would mean to this team. Uh, I mean, they're they're a tough team to beat right now. With uh, even when your you know top line has a couple of games off. And with this guy still skating, trying to work his way back in. This being Joffrey Lupo and Matt Fratton waiting to get back in. Maybe that's tonight. We'll find out. But Tessa Mark brought up the goal that James Van Riemsdyk scored uh, on Long Island. What I liked about that moment, as far as the Leaf perspective was, it was the type of goal and the effort that he gave to score that goal. That was a committing yourself in the front of the net, diving to knock the puck in. As Mark said, you expect your snipers on a two-on-one to finish like snipers do. And we saw some real nice goals. I'm going to talk about them around the NHL last night, some highlight goals. But when those goals aren't going in for you, we're not getting those opportunities to see Van Riemsdyk like that in a moment there where he thought, look, sacrifice the body just poke the puck in the net any way you can as mark said they're still finding ways to contribute here yeah and i think the key word that you used there was effort yeah. and a lot of times you know phil kessel and that line will get uh, harped on because it looks like there's a lack of effort and i think that um, in small plays like that where he's willing to sacrifice and die for that puck and score that is the effort that everybody wants to see night in and night out from this line and that's grittiness. That's what that is. And that's your inner fourth line that comes out, whether you're the second or first line out there. You're going to get the minutes, but you need to make sure to bring that effort every time. So whether it's taking a hit in the corner to make a play or taking a, a hack in front of the net, I think that um, they need to start doing that on, on a consistent basis. And if they do, I think their scoring chances and maybe goals will start coming consistently. Can we talk about scoring chances a little bit. I don't know how much, Brooke, you've seen of this on Twitter. This isn't even a Leaf-related question, but I'm going to put this out there because it happened in the NHL last night. And if you've not watched it yet on uh, the NHL.com website for the highlight, you need to see it. 
former St. Mike's major in Toronto, Justin Peters, third string goaltender for Carolina, gets the call because Dan Ellis is ill and can't go. And of course, Cam Ward done for the season, it appears. And Justin Peters maybe comes up with a save of the season as he robs, I believe it was Jason Pominville with one of those where the goaltenders at the far post and he somehow turns and he throws his body around and he gets the thumb of his glove on the puck to keep it out. And that'll be one of the key, key, word, uh, key highlights that people in the Twitter universe today will be talking about. I don't know if you guys saw that save that was made yet, but if you haven't seen it yet, take my advice. You need to watch it. And way to go, Justin Peters. Third string, not even starting with a club, and he comes up with a save like that. Well, I mean... And, well, Dan, you know Justin Peters from your days when you did cover St. Mike's. Yep. And, 